Hi, I'm Jim Booth. Welcome to the Baseball Rules in Plain English video. Baseball is a complicated sport with a lot of rules. The baseball rule book is difficult to read, so I wrote the book Baseball Rules in Plain English. That book can be used in conjunction with this video to learn the rules as they are applied on the field. We're going to show you in pictures what happens on the field and which rules apply to what you see. We'll make sure you get every rule right on the field every time you see it. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Rule 6.03. The batter's legal position shall be with both feet within the batter's box. Approved ruling. The lines defining the box are within the batter's box. Rule 6.03 says that the batter's legal position in the box is with both feet within the box. There is some confusion about this, so we're going to show you the actual legal positions. The chalk itself is within the box. So the line is here, and the chalk is within the box. Okay. So he can have his feet within the box, but not outside the box. This is not a legal position, because his feet aren't within the box. All right, step back. Now he's on the line, and the chalk line is within the box, so he's legal right there. That's as close as he can get and still be legal. Now a normal position would be something like that. When the player is looking at the pitcher and ready, play. Now we're going to talk about the judgment of a swing. A swing is when the batter actually attempts to hit the ball, and it's a judgment by the umpire. It's strictly his judgment, and there is no actual rules on it. There are some guidelines, though. The guidelines used in professional baseball is essentially you would judge that he swung the bat if the bat head goes beyond his front hip or front foot. So if he, if he checks his swing here, that would say it was not a swing. If he goes all the way around and the bat head goes out to the front, you would judge that as a swing. It's entirely the judgment of the umpire as to whether he feels he attempted to hit the ball or not. Rule 6.06b. A batter is out for illegal action when he steps from one batter's box to the other while the pitcher is in position ready to pitch. Now we're going to talk about the situation where the batter, switch hitting batter wants to switch boxes. Right? There's another myth regarding this situation. Some people think that once you have two strikes on you, you can't switch boxes, and that's incorrect. The only restriction is, is that the batter can't switch the boxes when the pitcher is on the rubber ready to throw the ball. Right? Otherwise, he can switch on every pitch if he wants. Okay? So if the pitcher is on the rubber right now, and, and he switches over, go ahead. The batter's out! Okay. All right, now the pitcher steps off the rubber, or time is out. Go ahead, Jeff. That's no problem. Rule 6.06a. A batter is out for illegal action when he hits a ball with one or both feet on the ground entirely outside the batter's box. If a batter hits a ball fair or foul while out of the batter's box, he shall be called out. The batter has to be in the box when he hits the ball also, but the rule is a little bit different here. Rule 606A says he is out if one or both feet are entirely outside the box on the ground when he contacts the ball. So Jeff, take a swing and step out. Right. In that position right there, his foot is entirely out of the box. So if he contacted the ball at, when his foot is in that position, he's out. Right. Slide your foot back just a little bit. Now right there, he's legal because although part of his foot is out, his foot is not entirely out. It's a little bit different than rule 603. Right. Now he's out if he contacts the ball and the ball goes either fair or foul. Rule 6.05, a batter is out when, G, his fair ball touches him before touching a fielder. Now we're going to talk about the situation where the batter hits the ball and then for some reason as he runs to first base the ball comes up and hits him. Now if he has one foot still in the box, you're going to call a foul ball. If both feet are out of the box, 
he would be out for being hit by his fair batted ball. So we're going to show this here. Jeff's going to swing and start to run. Go ahead, Jeff. All right, now when he's right there, if the ball comes down, for some reason comes back and hits him anywhere, okay, you would call foul ball because he's still got a foot in the box. Okay. Now, if his foot is up, come up, and he's starting to run and he's out there and it hits him now, now you'd call him out because he's out of the box. Rule 2.00 bunt is a batted ball not swung at but intentionally met with the bat and tapped slowly within the infield. Now we're going to talk about one of the situations that's on the top 40 myth list. It's where the batter leaves the bat out over the plate in a bunting stance and the ball comes through out of the strike zone. It's not a strike just because he leaves the bat out there. It's a strike if he intentionally tries to meet the ball. So we're going to show you what is a strike and what isn't. Jeff? Okay, that's a ball. Right? The ball was not in the strike zone. He just left the bat motionless out there. He didn't try to hit it in any way. It's a judgment called by the umpire. There's another one. Now that one, he moved the bat. You would judge that he tried to hit it, so you would call that a strike. Now we're going to go inside for a little bit, and we're going to describe some plays where the batter hits the ball, and the ball hits the bat a second time, either on a bunt or on a swing. Rule 6.05H, a batter is out when, after hitting or bunting a fair ball, his bat hits the ball a second time in fair territory. The ball is dead and no runners may advance. If the batter runner drops his bat and the ball rolls against the bat in fair territory and in the umpire's judgment, there was no intention to interfere with the course of the ball, the ball is alive and in play. Now we've come inside to describe some situations that are nearly impossible to simulate out on the field, so I'm just going to walk you through them. It deals with situations where the bat hits the ball a second time in fair territory and the batter would be out. In real life, the purpose of the rule is to keep the batter from hitting the ball and not hitting it very well, and then as he takes off, hitting it again. In real life, you're not going to call him out if there are situations that are, he just can't control. So for instance, a good example is if a guy squares around a bunt, and the pitch comes in, hits the bat, goes straight down, hits the ground, and bounces right back up within like a millisecond and hits his bat again, even though his bat's out here over fair territory and a bat hit the ball a second time. The way that's judged in the real world is, is that the, the ball hit the bat, not the bat hit the ball. There was no intent for him to do anything. And since he's still in the batter's box when it happened, you simply rule a foul ball. Now if for some reason he hit, bunted the ball and it went down and he came out of the box, and then regardless of whether it was intentional or not, if he hits the ball a second time over fair territory, you would call him out. The key thing in all of these is which one is doing the hitting. If you carefully read the rule, it says in another situation where the ball is bunted, and the batter drops his bat, if the ball rolls into the stationary bat, it's not an out. If the bat rolls into the ball, or he intentionally threw the bat at the ball, then he would be out. So here's an example. If he, he squares around a bunt, he bunts the ball, he drops the bat, and for some reason, the ball rolls into the bat. That would not be an out. If he bunts the ball and the ball's out here, and then he throws the bat and the bat hits the ball, that would be an out. All right, now we're going to talk about another one of the myths, or several of the myths, and that is when the batter gets hit by a pitched ball. The first one we're going to talk about is the old myth that the hands are part of the bat, which they are not. The rule says that the hands are part of your body. Right? So, if a pitch comes in and it hits this batter right on his hand like that, that's hit the batter. Okay? So he would get first base because it hit, he was hit by a pitch. Right? It, now, if the ball hits the bat, of course, it's a batted ball. Right? Now the other thing is, is if he's trying to avoid the pitch when that happens, he gets, he gets first base. Right? However, if he's swinging at this pitch, 
and it's an inside pitch and it hits him here on the knuckles. Now it's a dead ball, but it's a strike. Okay? And it doesn't matter if it hits him on the hands or any other part of his body. If he gets fooled on a pitch and it comes down and it hits his foot and he swings. Okay? If he's swinging at the pitch, it's a strike. Now we're going to talk about the situation where the ball hits the hands while they're in the strike zone. So if he was squaring around a bunt right, and his hands are over the plate and it hits his hands, it's also a strike. Or if it hits any part of his body that's in the strike zone, or for some reason his knee was out there, if it hits the batter in the strike zone, it's a strike and a dead ball. It's always a dead ball when he gets hit, then you decide whether it's going to be a strike or an award of first base or a ball. Now he must avoid the ball too. Okay? So if he doesn't try to avoid a pitch that's coming at him, if he just stands there and lets it hit him, you're going to call it a ball. Okay? If he's trying to avoid the pitch, then you're going to give him first base. Okay? Now another tough judgment is one where he's trying to duck the pitch. Okay? Pitch is coming up and in at him, but he started to swing at it, and then he, as it goes by, he ducks and falls, and the bat goes around. Right? If it's not a strike because the bat went around, you have to judge that he, whether he was intending to hit the ball or whether he was trying to save his life. Okay? Right? If you think he was ducking the ball and the bat happened to go around as part of that action, then you're not going to call a strike. If you think that he actually committed to hitting the pitch, then you would call it a strike. It's a judgment by the umpire, and it's one of the tough ones we make so we get paid for. All right? Another thing we want to talk about is a pitch that is a myth about the ball hitting the ground and then hitting the batter. All right? Put it down. If the ball pitch comes in and bounces and comes up and hits the batter, he's still hit by a pitch. A pitch is a ball delivered to the batter by the pitcher. It doesn't matter if it's in flight or not, it's still a pitch. So if it hits the ground, hits him, he gets first base. All right? If it hits the ground and he swings and hits it, hits it for a home run, it's a home run. It's a pitch, whether it bounces once, twice, three times, or is in flight, doesn't matter. Okay, now we're going to talk about the situation where a pitch hits the bat and the batter didn't actually mean to hit the ball, or he's actually ducking the ball. So if Jeff's up here and a pitch comes in high and he ducks, but he keeps the bat up and the ball hits the bat, okay, Anytime the ball hits the bat, by rule, it's a batted ball. Whether he tried to hit it or not, this is a batted ball. And most of the time, it's gonna, it hits here and it goes foul, so you have a foul ball. But if it happened to hit here and bounce out fair, that's a fair batted ball, and the batter needs to run, and the defense needs to play on him and put him out. Okay? So it doesn't matter whether he meant to do it or not. That's a batted ball when the ball hits the bat. All right? now, there are some unusual situations that aren't covered by the rules, and that's a situation where he might, let's say, move up here. Okay. All right, let's say a pitch comes in high and tight, right, and he's ducking out of the way, and as he ducks out of the way, he steps out of the box. Right. So if you focus in on his foot there, his foot's out of the box, and now the ball hits the bat. Well, we covered some rules before that say if he's out of the box like that, when he contacts the ball, he's out for illegally batted ball. But in this situation, if you judge that he was ducking it, you're not going to call him out for an illegally batted ball, but it's still a batted ball. Right? So he gained no advantage by trying to step out of the box to hit the ball. He was trying to duck. Right? So it's still a batted ball, but it's not an illegally batted ball. Rule 2.00, foul tip is a batted ball that goes sharp and direct from the bat to the catcher's hands and is legally caught. It is not a foul tip unless caught, and any foul tip that is caught is a strike, and the ball is in play. It is not a catch if it is a rebound unless the ball has first touched the catcher's glove or hand. All right, now we're going to talk about the foul tip. A foul tip, by definition, is a ball that goes sharp and direct from the bat to the catcher's hand or glove and is legally caught. A there's really nothing foul about a foul tip, because if it meets those conditions, touches the bat and is caught, it's a strike and the ball's live. It's the same as if he swung and missed. Okay? If the catcher doesn't catch the ball, then we have a foul ball, which is a dead ball. Okay? So it's a difference between foul tip is a strike, foul ball is not. So 
Here we go. I'm going to show you. The ball goes, touches the bat, goes sharply and directly to the catcher's glove, and is caught. Okay. That's a foul tip, which is a strike, and it's the same as if he swung and missed as far as if a runner's stealing or any other play that's going on. The fact that it hit the bat means nothing. All right. Now, if the ball goes sharp and direct to the bat, comes back, hits his mask, and then somehow bounces up, he turns his glove over and he catches it, that is not a legal catch, so that would be a foul ball. It became a foul ball when it hit his mask. It has to hit the hand or glove first to be a legal catch. Okay. If, all right, the other thing is, if the ball hits sharp and direct, comes straight back, goes all the way to the backstop, or that's just a foul ball. All right. It's only a foul tip strike when it goes from here to the hand or glove first and is legally caught. If he drops it down then picks it up, that's not a catch, it's a foul ball. Now we're going to talk about another myth. This is a situation where the batted ball, the ball comes off the bat and the first thing it does is hits home plate. For some reason, some people think that that makes it a foul ball. That's not true. The plate is in fair territory and there's nothing special about it. It's just like the ground. You don't rule on a fair or foul ball until it gets past first or third base or you judge it fair or foul. Right? So if this pitch ball comes in, he hits the ball, it immediately goes down and hits the plate, bounces up. You're not going to make it ruling on fair or foul until you follow the rules of fair or foul, which we'll get into later. Simply hitting the plate first is not a foul ball. Okay, now we're going to talk about the situation where the batter swings and misses at a third strike pitch. Typically this is called a drop third strike, but that's not technically correct. The, the batter can become a runner if there's two outs or if there's less than two outs and first base is unoccupied. If he swings and misses at a third strike or if a called third strike is not caught by the catcher he can run and become a batter runner. The confusion is is that it has to be a legally caught pitch to make the batter be out which means the catcher has to catch the pitch in flight. So if the ball bounces to the catcher and he catches it perfectly but it hit the ground first that's not a legally caught third strike so the batter can run. Right? The batter can run anytime prior to entering the dugout or reaching the dugout steps. So we're going to demonstrate this for you to kind of make it simpler to understand. Okay, now we're going to give an example of a bounced pitch that gets caught, but it's, it's an uncaught third strike and the batter may run to first. Now he caught that ball, but the ball bounced first. So it's not a legally caught third strike and the batter could run to first. He needs to be tagged at this point or the catcher can throw the ball to first. Now we're going to talk about the situation where the third strike is uncaught and the batter doesn't realize it and he starts to walk off. He can run to first base anytime prior to getting to the dugout steps or entering into the dugout. So here we go. Now he can walk off, the caught, pitch was uncaught, now he realizes it. Now he needs to be tagged or first base tagged before he gets there. Okay, now we're going to talk about the situations where the batter swings at the pitch and he lets the bat fly into, into the field of play. Now there may or may not be interference on the play and there may be some dangerous situations for youth players. So if he throws the bat into play and it interferes with the fielder's attempt to field the ball, then you're going to call an out for interference. If the bat doesn't interfere, there's nothing to call. There is no out just because he threw the bat. You would warn him and remove them from the game in some situations for safety purposes in youth league. But we're going to show three situations here. The first one is he, he hits the ball and the bat goes towards the third baseman. Okay, go ahead. All right, now if that bat actually reached the third baseman before the ball did and caused him to not be able to play the ball, then you would have interference. If it didn't affect the fielder's play, there's no out for throwing the bat. Right. 
Here's another situation that happens in youth leagues. Well, it happens in all leagues, but where he throws the bat towards the on-deck batter. Now that's why in some youth leagues they don't have on-deck batters. Right? It's a safety issue. That bat could seriously injure that on-deck batter. Right? Now there's a situation where he swings around and he, the bat goes around, he hits the ball or misses it, and the bat comes back and hits the catcher or the umpire. Right? That's another safety issue in youth baseball. You would encourage him to hold on to the bat, but he's not out just because that happened. All right, now we're going to talk about a very fundamental part of the game, judging a fair or foul ball. Seems like it ought to be pretty simple, but there's a lot of confusion on it, and there are a lot of things that have to happen uh, that you need to know. All right, first of all, the chalk of the foul line is in fair territory. So the line is actually here, so the chalk is actually fair. Okay? Now the rule is, is if any part of the ball is touched over any part of the line, the ball will be fair. So if the ball was just like that and it's